Hello everyone and welcome back to another edition of the Velvet Lounge Life. Yes, I am going to tell you that picking is still alive and well. Um, and this is one of the lots that I have to share with you. It was one of those, you saw it, you dumped it, and now you're going to go through it. So, um, what I'm going to do is simply, because I only looked at a few items in this box. So, I don't know what all is in here. Are any pieces signed? Are any pieces silver or gold or platinum? Are there any diamonds present? I have to get a diamond tester. I keep saying that, but uh, the list of things to do is relatively lengthy. And now that we're getting into the deep, it's not deep fall here yet in New England, but it's definitely getting into fall. We are in it, but we're not in the deep bowels of it yet. And so we have lots of prepping things to do. And I do have an announcement or two for you guys, so please stay tuned for that. But without further ado, let's get into what is in this box. And I do have two plates back there, or you could use, I use bowls or plates, obviously, whatever, it doesn't matter, or even if you have little boxes, so that as I go along, I can sort these items out into a keep pile, what I would, you know, the real gold, silver, like things like that. Um, any of, if there's any, like, for example, if I found any Yves Saint Laurent or, um, let's just say, ooh, I can't, David Berman, like there's certain names that you look for in costume jewelry and real jewelry as well, obviously, that I will put those in the other plate and then, I have just like a general plate of things that could be sold separately just because of what they are. So that's my triple sort and here we go. So the first thing I'm going to take out is this and the reason why is this is one of the things I told you I already looked at a couple things. One of the ways you could tell if you have real pearls or not is simply by touching them. Real pearls will be cool to the touch, and also they will not have a plasticky feel to them. These have a plasticky feel. They're not cool to the touch. There are no knots in between each one of these. I'm going to call them beads because that's what they are. And also, if you scrape this on your tooth, it's not. it doesn't have that gritty feel that a pearl should have. So... And But these are actually, I believe these are blue lapi lapis, is what the stone is called. These are that particular stone. So what I might end up doing is deconstructing this. Maybe I'll use, you know, these in another project or something. But this is definitely going in the junk lot pile for now. That needs work on it because of the deconstruction. And this, I sometimes what I do, I go through and I immediately just take out big chunky things that are, I think that what people do is they, I call them attention getters. And what they'll do is they'll put some of this stuff in there just to get your attention. But this is obviously a barrette and it's obviously nothing overly special, but in a junk lot, you know, people are looking for stuff like this because, like I said, even with the necklace that I showed you, they'll deconstruct that. Put this up so that you have more something interesting to look at. And here we have, this is a plastic beaded black necklace. So, once again, nothing overly enthusiastically crazy there. And here, there's a few watches in here, which I saw that initially. And this is not sterling silver. And sometimes you'll get sil and you'll get silver, um, like gold over silver. If you ever have anything like that, then what the um, dealers look for, as far as like the people that are at the refineries, 
is they just want to know in that case what is the silver content. They don't even recognize the gold at all. However, if you sell lots, for example, of gold-plated items, then this would be, if this was that, then this would go in that pile. So let's see, there is a maker's name on here. You guys, can you see that? Ooh, you can kind of see it, not really. Let's see what it says. It might say China, and it actually says China, which is funny, but it has like two little, like, I don't know, a symbol on one side. And sometimes people do, like makers do that just to trick you. But another way to know that you have a piece that's probably like inexpensive, made in China somewhere, is if you look at the face of this watch, it has no name on it. It does have a Japan movement, but no name. So I put that over into my, what I consider my junk pile. What else can we look at? There are some oddly made Christmas necklace. I'm sorry, um, earrings. These are pierced. They're odd because it almost looks as if you would take the, you could actually wear this if you have a backing or maybe you could wear this part or if you wanted it longer, that's the purpose I believe is you could then insert it and have a longer hanging earring. These are have no maker's name on them anywhere. They're definitely, obviously, not silver or gold. And I was going to say, I thought I saw the, a match in there. But what I do with those is I just put them to the side, the earrings, look for matches. If they're not already together, then what I'll do is, as I go along, I will obviously pair everything up. And this big clunky watch, which the, I don't know, the gold gilding or whatever, which is not real gold, it's not even gold plated, is coming off. These little angels, though, that would be interesting for my charm string. I could deconstruct this and use parts of this for charm strings. I have to just make sure the metal is doesn't have that verdigris on it. And... Let's take it apart, see how worn it is in the inside, because you don't, yeah, see, I probably would not use this. It's like way too worn on the inside. So can't even use that for our worldwide charm string project. Well, it would have been great to add one of these angels, but it's not worth the risk to the project. What else? I saw this I saw. So... I know that this is real gold just by the look of it. However, I always double check and you can do a quick test. And a quick test is using a magnet. If this has any magnetism at all, it is not real. So if I wave it like the magnet and it tries to follow or if it tries to attach, it's not real. And then what I do, and see, you can hang your handy dandy magnet on the side of your box. Then what I do with next is, of course, you, and this is something that a lot of people miss. You also want to check the clasp because sometimes the clasp is replaced with something that is not real gold. And this has no movement other than me banging on it for some really odd reason at all so I know that that's real gold and because one thing that you don't want is to deal with a scrap metal company or someone who's buying your stuff and they think that it's all real and they're like yeah but the clasp is not the rest of it is but the clasp isn't so another thing you should be able to do is find a gold mark on the clasp let me make this a little larger. I hope it does not get blurry for you guys. Let's see what happens. But that's probably the largest I can make it without making it super blurry. Because we need more subscribers so we can get better equipment. And you can see the gold. It says 14. It's upside down. But it does say 14 carat. Of course it was upside down. Wait a minute. Now I lost it. Where are you? There it is, see, 14 carat. 
And then looking at the necklace, see what that says. And that also says 14 karat. And it has other words there as well. Well, let's see how long this is. It's unfortunately attached to another necklace. They were friends for years and now they're coming apart at the seams. Okay, at the link. How about that? Ew, let me fix that. There. And I've been digging around outside in the gardens all day and I was like when I come in I'm going to do something that is not a chore because I don't consider this to be a chore and also I wanted to go through this stuff because I was curious as to what all is in here and at the near the end I'll tell you how much I paid for all of this you guys know me it wasn't very much on average if you average out the cost and it can't be very much because you have fees to pay and all sorts of labor and cleaning and listing and shipping and stuff that you have to do and storing. So you can't pay a lot for stuff if you're doing resale. It's ridiculous. A lot of people just don't understand how to do it. And then they wonder how come they're not making enough money. So this is the necklace. This is, I believe, I'm going to say 12 inches, maybe longer than 12 inches. I do have a tape measure here. Let's see. Roughly, oh, times two. This is almost 20 inches long. Because you have to, it's full, it's in half. So times two. That's about 20 inches long. So longer than I thought. And let me see if I can get a weight on it. Sometimes, it go, like, it's so light that you can't even get a weight. Let's see, turn this on, and I measure in grams when I do gold, or silver even, and we're going to make sure it's on zero, there you go, put that on zero, drop the necklace, and that is three grams of gold. So if you were to look up what gold prices are for today, that three grams obviously is one that's profit as far as, you know, having to deal with all of this stuff. Um, you should, it depends upon how much you paid for everything. Hopefully you would have made your money back. So in the comments below, Note, as I'm just going to give you a quick, like, flyover. How much would you have paid for all of this stuff? And remember, you haven't, like, actually, we'll take the loop out. Loop not included. Um, you are at, you're, you're not standing there, like, trying to go through every item, item by item. You, first of all, just don't have time for that. Um, so in, you know, just approximately, let's say that you found this at a garage sale or a shop or a flea market. Let's use that as our measure versus a pick. What would you have paid for all of this? So type your number down in the comments below and let me know what you would have paid. So, and remember, I did take out these. So all of this is included in your estimate let me know down below so let's continue and I do want to know what the cost is per gram for gold today so hold on for a minute yes I'm back in the disco jams continue so let's get with it so what was your guess how much is gold selling per gram today well it depends on when you're watching this video, but today it is selling for $33.84 per gram. So that necklace 
times the weight, which you saw, is what the value of that necklace is. So that's also something helpful for you to know. So easy to figure out when you're, sh even if you're shopping at a retail store or hopefully you're being cautious buying pr precious and semi-precious metals online. Um, but wherever you buy your gold, silver, platinum items, very helpful for you to know what the actual cost is per gram for that metal. I know, yes, there's some artistic value also added to the jewelry, always, because someone had to design it, make it, whatever the case may be. But the thing that you want, and actually, I reweighed this necklace, and it actually weighs four, it's, it keeps going between three and four grams, so I'm going to go with three grams. So this necklace is worth about $100. So you have to be careful not to overpay because I could see that necklace in a store. They're probably going to sell it to you for 200 and some odd dollars. Obviously, they do have a lot of overhead and they're probably the second, like they bought it from someone who's really the in initiator and they're like the middleman and then you are the purchaser. So there's all of that tied into the value as well. But if you're buying from someone privately, just something to know. Or if you're buying, you know, gold to scrap or silver or whatever the precious metal is, once again, just something to know. So we also have this very decorative um, bracelet. Now, what I don't like about this, I can tell, first of all, these are not real pearls. They're glued in. The better costume jewelry is held in almost like with a claw that comes up like this and then the stone or whatever is placed inside. And also, big deal, it's missing like a pearl here. I have extra pearls that I would just glue a replacement in. You just have to make sure that when you do that, you clean up the glue around the edges, make sure that the that particular replacement matches the others and you know is this something you could resell as a single item on its own yes um, I'm looking in the inner part of it just to see if there's a maker's name and there's not so this is actually something and I and the other thing just to let you guys know is after this video is over yes I go back and double check everything. Everything gets checked three times by us just to make sure we don't miss anything. And this was attached to that and I can tell immediately that this is a sterling silver necklace that's stuck within these earrings. And this design is what they call a brutalist design. It's part of the mid-century modern suite of types if you will and what the reason it's brutalist is a brutalist it was almost like it's hard it could hurt um type if you think about it that way it's it seems heavy like that's what that design element was but it's also part of the mid-century modern era of design so these are some mid-century modern earrings so these are probably from the 1970s and they really want to stay attached to each other and this necklace. Now, I touch enough silver, gold, etc. to know, like, usually, almost immediately if something is what it is. But once again, I always, you know, do an initial test. It, Like I said, if that was to, like, the necklace was to try to attach itself, that would tell you that it's not real. The necklace is has zero magnification which is a good thing, but it's not the only way to, t to tell the, you know, I'm also, yes, going to look at this with a loop, but also what you would want to do if you are not 100% sure, or if you're just iffy at all, is acid test. And we do have a set of acids so that we can test the purity of the metal. And this says 925. It also, let me pull this closer because this is so tiny. 
has the name of a maker on it, which is kind of odd. Does is that a country maybe? It definitely says 925. Then it has an the letter A in a circle. So if you know what maker uses an A in a circle as their hallmark, let me know. But also, once again, on the clasp, it also has the American silver mark on it. Like I said, always check your clasp. So what does that mean? This will go and live on the little, I guess I'll call it a tray, but plate with the gold necklace. So that is awesome. And some Chanel. But is that Chanel? I don't know what this is, but when I find like little vials like this, I just put these in my scrap or junk, not my scrap, but my junk costume jewelry pile. So when people buy the jewelry, they also have like some other things in there that may not be jewelry like that. And this, um, okay. So we probably could do an entire video on Jade. I do not believe this is Jade. I believe that this is probably Agate. However, I am definitely, there is a test that you can do. Like I said, I'm not going to go into all the details of it, but just to double check whether these pieces are Jade. So, so in my own estimation, just from my own experience of doing this for so many years, I do not believe that this is gold. First of all, I could see a little bit of wear around the circular um, enclosure here or clasp. So that's a dead giveaway. And then obviously I would look for any hallmarks to see if any, and yeah, I can tell even more so by the inside and even where it connects. But this is something that I would just do a double check on and, and because if nothing else, I want to really verify that this is not Jade. If it is Jade, then all of this gold stuff comes off and these pieces would be sold in a lot together because a Jade this rich in green has a really awesome value. A lot of people, Jade is like one of those overlooked, I have no idea why, semi-precious stones here in the United States. But um, usually the people who do buy them, you know, Jade from me, are mostly from a foreign market. Whether it's in the UK or whether it is, um, of course, from one of the Asian countries. I was just looking to see if this had a maker. Usually the, the brutalist designs from the 1970s usually do have a maker's name on them, like Vendome. Um, you might even find some Sarah Coventry, and there's other makers, but these don't have a maker's name. And these I will put over in my scrap pile. You will, you guys will see that my scrappy, junky pile of costume jewelry, that is usually where I sell a lot of this stuff. I just sell it by the pound. Why? Because unless the piece is over a certain value or a certain maker or, you know, something really unusual or even see this glitzy piece right here. This is something that I would not put in that pile. And it also has, you could tell the age on the back. It has old fashioned back. It has this little C hook as far as, you know, how you open and close the pin. Whereas the newer ones, you know, they have like the latch. Um, and just the way it's made, it's made, I mean, I wonder if this is silver, like, I don't think that this is silver. This is not silver, but it almost looks like the bar is. But it's just the way it's made. And even if this was silver, big deal. It's so little, it doesn't really matter. But what matters is the way it looks on the front. And remember what I told you guys? Look at how the rhinestones and pieces are attached. These have that, and I'll try to get a little bit closer. That See how it comes over? has that... I call it like a claw me mechanism. So it, then these stones are not glued in. Um, 
and they do have that foil back and you could tell because they're shiny underneath um so this is something that you could def and look at the shape they actually have molded leaves on it and all the different colors and this color scheme is not a common one so is this a juliana that's something that i would have to check but this is definitely something with age it's what and it, the other thing that's amazing look how complete it is so now we're going to kind of just try to hurry through some of this because this video is getting longer than I thought I just noticed here is a costume jewelry um brooch so I would put that in the good jewelry pile I love Jesus I'll put that in our miscellaneous pile Ooh, I think I found another piece of silver up to everything else this desperately needs to be cleaned but I am 95% sure this is sterling silver actually I could see the number on the clasp but let's test the chain with the magnet ooh see that is not real silver so you can see how the magnet is attracted to the metal. So what they did is they put a real silver clasp on this not real silver, but very nice. I mean, look at the way the chain is made. It's highly unusual chain. So that will go to the side and anything else we can quickly look at. Oh, here is another, I just saw this, another real silver necklace. And I, it looks exactly like the first one that I took out. Let me find it on its plate. See, there's two of them. The only difference is this one is thicker. So where is the loop? Oh, it's over there. Actually, without the loop, I can see the 925 here, and you can easily see it here. Oops, here. And like I said, this looks like, oh, and it also has, which I didn't even see that obviously, this beautiful pendant on it. And this is actually a real pearl. I could tell just by touching it. And it has the silver mark right here. Yes, you guys, look at my hands. That's from gardening. I am cut up. I have, I scrubbed my nails out and I have all kind of little injuries, all in the sake of making sure that we have our own natural food to eat. And look at this. This is a marcasite and black onyx earring. Hopefully I have two of them in here. And it has a silver mark clearly written as well as a maker's mark on it, SU. I have to check. That could be one of the um, American Indian tribes right up here. And there is a maker's mark, silver mark. That's really pretty. So let's put that to the side and hope and the uh, and something like th that you want to check on earrings is to make sure that if they have hooks for example that the hooks are also silver but it, at first before this video runs out please remember to subscribe to our channel give us a thumbs up as well as leave comments down below um, I am going to do probably a couple videos to go through. I, you guys should, I mean, if you knew how much stuff I had, you would be like, wow, that's, and look at this. This is another silver necklace. Let's check the clasp. And the clasp has a tiny silver mark on it, but let's also do our magnet test on this one. And you can see this one is not attracted at all. So that's awesome because this is a nice thick rope necklace. So this is a great sale by itself. And let's do a, an experiment. So I want to know how much silver we had so far. And of course it cut off because it timed out. 
All these battery savers, sometimes it can be a pain. We have 13 grams of silver and silver, sterling silver here in the United States is selling at 78 cents per gram. So just to give you an idea of value. But I will tell you right now, and there is definitely, I think, more silver in here. Not sure if there's more gold. Um, but I know this video is going to run out. The amount I paid for everything that you see, $5. So come back again to the Velvet Lounge Life. And I am going to continue going through all of this jewelry. Plus I have more, you guys, that I got from another pick. And let you guys see what you can find when you're picking if you're out going to tag sales garage sales estate sales flea markets etc please remember that your health is your wealth without your health you have absolutely nothing so please take care of yourselves and be well